Hey what's up YouTube welcome to antenna tutorial series and in today's tutorial we are going to study micro strip or patch antennas now these antennas are becoming increasingly popular and useful because uh, they are printed directly on the circuit boards and they find their applications in mobile phones so we've got mobile phones in every hand these days so you could imagine the penetration and influence of these antennas in our daily la daily life now patch antennas are also popular because they are low cost and they have low profile and they can be easily fabricated and moreover the formation of arrays in patch antennas is even more meaningful and it makes a lot of sense with with directivity increasing many folds with with just a small amount of modification in the printed circuit board we'll discuss all about that in this tutorial and uh, now starting off with the construction of patch and dinners you would you would need to think of these antennas as um, a design on a printed circuit board let us say we have a printed circuit board here which is rectangular or square in shape and on top of this uh, we deposit a layer a metallic layer that would represent an antenna now if I was to draw the top view of a patch antenna or a microstrip antenna I would make it something like this where this deposit of metal on the substrate of PCB is the microstrip transmission line and this this rectangular deposit on top of the substrate of dimension L and W would constitute the microstrip antenna itself now if we were to make the side view uh, now this is the top view of a microstrip antenna if we were to make the side view that will look something like this and you could see the deposit here and this will be the patch antenna this will be the microstrip transmission line and of course from the side view we'll be able to see L. Now please understand this length L of the microstrip antenna is very important parameter. This L needs to be equivalent to lambda by 2 to be able to send a signal of a frequency associated with this 
wavelength so in other words if we were to find the frequency of operation of the patch antenna shown in this figure the formula mathematical formula would be this and it is a it is advisable and said that in this equation the length should be equivalent to half of the wavelength within the dielectric substrate medium so we could we could eventually remove this c by substituting 1 upon under root mu r mu naught in the denominator now l l is the quantity that directly affects the frequency of operation and w would uh, control the input impedance and it is going to control the bandwidth now to make the things easier to remember we could say that the bandwidth would be directly proportional to W however impedance will be inversely proportional to W the input impedance of patch antenna would be around 300 ohms uh, we could we could increase the input impedance by uh, decreasing the width and we could f decrease the impedance by increasing the width if we if we talk about the value of impedance in terms of its matching ability to air this this value looks decent enough but if we talk about the impedance of of this antenna as 300 ohms with its matching capability to the transmission line there is a huge mismatch because the signal uh, will be fed to this microstrip antenna via a transmission line that that will have an approximate value of input impedance closer to 50 ohms so the designing would require a careful monitoring of uh, w we could increase or decrease w to to match uh, this antenna with air or transmission line now another thing that width controls is the radiation pattern so the radiation pattern of the patch antenna has uh, the formula in spherical coordinate as e theta and e phi I'll write down the values the the direct values here and what you'd find is
that it somehow depends upon the value of the width although you find and we have a cos of phi here that goes here although you'll find L being featured in in the formula but this this will not change because whenever you make a microstrip patch antenna you would want that antenna to radiate a specific frequency or a very narrow band of frequency so you would not want to change this value drastically so this has a limitation on its change so the only thing that uh, can be changed by huge amounts to manipulate the radiation pattern or uh, the power pattern of this antenna would be the width and I'll write down the formula for electric field intensity received at a point uh, at a distant point in spherical coordinate system by the patch antenna and we have a cos theta and sine phi now Uh, in the above equation, by the way, K represents the free space wave number and it's given by 2 pi by lambda. And uh, if, you, if you see the radiation pattern being plotted by varying the values of phi, uh, you would find that this is pretty directional with with some side lobes present and I would not go into the details of the radiation patterns but if you would want to increase the directivity then then you could simply make an array of microstrip antennas on on the printed circuit board with with the transmission line passing right uh, in in the center and I'll draw an illustrative diagram that could help you uh, visualize what is happening when we talk about uh, the array of patch antennas so on a on a printed circuit board we would make the transmission line go right in the center and and then we'll we'll feed the signal to different patches like this and of course the size of this printed circuit board will be a lot larger than than what we would expect to be in a patch antenna with with single patch the directivity of a patch antenna is approximately 5 to 7 dB and the fields are linearly polarized and in the horizontal direction when when we view the patch antenna 
in the horizontal alignment. Now another important point uh, that that needs to be discussed about patch antennas is the ability uh, to increase or decrease the efficiency of the patch antennas when we fabricate them. Uh, that topic would include a lot of a lot of discussion on on the material of substrate that we use and what kind of itching do we use to deposit the the metallic strips on top of this substrate now the better the fabrication the better is is the transmission and reception with with lower reflection coefficients and uh, that was it about the introduction of microstrip patch antennas and mm, we'll, we'll cover more of these antennas when we when we compare the directivity and fastenal beam widths and half power beam widths of all the aperture antennas and we'll cover the mathematics there as well but as far as introduction to patch antennas is concerned this should be enough to to get you going and thank you so much for watching this video and appreciating other videos and if you like the series of videos that I'm making these days then please give them a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel that helps me a lot and keeps me motivated thank you so much for watching the video again have a good day good life ahead bye